Here we're going to talk about energy, just energy for contraction, uh, for muscle contraction. Uh, we've already talked about the fact that ATP is the energy molecule. It is the molecule of energy that can be used directly by all living things. Uh, for muscle contraction, there's only a few seconds. Uh, there isn't a magic number in there, four to uh, four to six seconds, but just a just a few seconds of reserve of this molecule are stored in the muscles. And after that's used up, after a couple of seconds, that, that reserve of ATP is used up and the body must then utilize other pathways to replenish your ATP stores. So essentially, for our purposes, we'll keep it simple, but here's an ATP molecule here on the right in the diagram and the bonds are, the bonds are what uh, or where the energy is actually stored. When you break bonds in molecules, energy is going to be released. So if we essentially break a phosphate off of this ATP, we're left with a less energy, high energy molecule called ADP. And what we want to do, what the body wants to do, is replenish ATP stores. So the first strategy, I guess, for the body to use is direct phosphorylation. So, in other words, we're going to use the molecule that's left over, the uh, adenosine diphosphate. We're going to use what's left over and using another natural compound in the body, creatine phosphate. We're simply going to have a phosphate be donated from this molecule, and it's going to replenish. We're going to go from the two phosphates back to this high-energy ATP molecule. So we're just going to add a phosphate from one compound back to this one and we have ATP again to be used directly through the body or by the body for muscle contraction. And again to point out that the exact number of seconds is not so important but the creatine phosphate supplies are exhausted in uh, roughly 15 seconds. So there's not a whole lot of time for continued muscle and, and, and sustained muscle contraction just from the use of creatine phosphate. The next strategy or the next thing that the body is going to do to try to utilize or replenish ATP molecules again is a pathway referred to as aerobic respiration. Um, you may be familiar with some of these processes. Um, this, is a, this is a part of the overall process of cellular respiration that you may have studied in another class or in a biology class before. But essentially using materials from the food that you eat, uh, glucose and glucose-like co uh, compounds, that is broken down to actually release energy. And relatively, for one molecule of glucose in this pathway of, or set of pathways, 32 ATP, ideally 32 ATP, can be produced. Now that's a, that's a good return. The number one thing, however, that is the limiting reagent or the limiting factor, I guess, in this process is the, is the requirement of continuous oxygen. And so that's where this pathway typically breaks down, is a, is a body's ability to deliver oxygen to all of the cells. So that's why we talk about training aerobically. What you're doing is you're training essentially your heart and your respiratory and circulatory system to efficiently deliver oxygen to all of these cells. The final pathway is, or for replenishing ATP molecules is what happens when we don't have adequate oxygen over time. And that is anaerobic, or without, literally means without oxygen. Anaerobic glycolysis is going to result in the formation of a, of a compound called lactic acid. And it only produces about 2 ATP, but it doesn't need oxygen. It's, it's, very, it's very fast, but again, not quite as efficient because you're not getting a high rate of return. This, this is going to result to and contribute to um, muscle fatigue. Now, oxygen debt is what we go into when we don't have enough oxygen. We can't produce oxygen molecules or deliver them, excuse me, deliver them to the muscle cells fast enough. So as a result, um, the pyruvic acid we talked about in the aerobic respiration pathway is actually converted to lactic acid. And this is the lactic acid that is uh, responsible for the soreness in muscles, the soreness in muscles that can last 
depending, can last in uh, for minutes to hours to even days, depending on the quote-unquote physical condition that one would be in. So this, the lactic acid, what contributes to the burning feel um, during during exercise and the subsequent soreness for perhaps days later. So when a muscle is actually fatigued, it is going to be unable to contract even with a, a stimulus. Now you've got, we as humans, uh, we have a lot of uh, kind of survival techniques long before muscles typically get uh, fatigued, truly fatigued. Um, and that, that occurs simply because uh, it's, there's a sci- psychological factor involved. That psychological factor is where your brain says, hey, dummy, stop working out. It hurts. It's too painful. You're never going to make it. You got to conserve your energy. And, uh, you know, like me, I would probably quit long before I'd ever finish a marathon. Um, but true fatigue is caused by this oxygen debt. Oxygen debt has to be repaid. The, the books have to be evened out to remove oxygen debt. And oxygen is the only thing that's going to help us remove the lactic acid from our muscle tissue as well. But the muscle fatigue, true muscle fatigue, is the inability to contract even with the stimulus. The muscle just will not sufficiently, they will not respond and they will not fatigue. So it's even more than just the the simple uh, becoming less and less efficient or strong or forceful for muscle contraction. True muscle fatigue is the absence of or inability to contract. So the last thing in in review is that ATP is the one molecule. It's the only molecule that we can directly use for muscle contraction. Uh, In reviewing the contraction sequence of what happens in the muscle tissue with the myosin and actin interactions, ATP is the molecule that has to be used. There's only certain amounts of storage of this a couple seconds with worth and then we have to try to have different pathways to replenish the ATP. We can use creatine phosphate. Most likely our body wants to use aerobic respiration as long as we have enough oxygen and when we run out of the efficiency or the ability to bring oxygen efficiently to all the muscle cells we are going to use anaerobic respiration. But the bad news for that is the buildup of lactic acid. So there's a price to be paid for any of these processes, but these are the three processes of replenishing this high-energy molecule called ATP.